don't know what I did today. Probably a big mistake. I was told not to go this way <laughs> and to get back on the Katy Trail, but I was like, I don't know, I missed the hills. So I'm gonna go do hills today. And I've been told it's very, very hilly for 40 miles. I'm gonna go tackle this one at a time. I must be crazy. Awesome. I'm learning how to climb using my arms and rocking my bike. It's making me learn. And you think Missouri is flatland. Come to Missouri and climb some hills. Stay on the south side of the Missouri. <laughs> First time I've had to walk up any hill. I mean, it's probably not me. It's probably not the hill, it's me. <laughs> Plus I loaded up with groceries thinking I was gonna be on flat ground. This is one of those moments where the day changes so fast to the opposite. I went 25 miles up and down insane steep hills on the south side of the Missouri between Jefferson City and Boonville where I'm heading. And I just asked the guy at Jamestown in the middle what the next 25, 30 miles are like. And he said that they were really flat, very slight hills. And as soon as I made the turn to get on this in this direction, instead of having a quartering headwind, I got this insane tailwind. I'm just like cruising at 18 when I'm pedaling. Put some music on. Chilling. As I ride my way westward past Jamestown, I notice another massive storm brewing up ahead of me. I ride as fast as I can hoping to reach a campground that is just beyond Boonville. With a population of 8,400, Boonville is located off Interstate 70 halfway between Kansas City and St. Louis. It was named after legendary frontiersmen Daniel Boone's sons, Nathan and Daniel Morgan, who settled in the area in the early 1800s due to its saltwater spring allowing them to start a salt mineral business called Boone's Lick. Being the major intersection between the nations north, south, east, and west, and located next to the Missouri River, Boonville has a rich history due to its geographical importance. During the American Civil War, it was occupied by both the Union and Confederate armies and was the site of two battles, including one of the first battles of the war, the Boonville Battle of June 17, 1861, which established Union Army's control of the Missouri River for the rest of the war. I'm like four miles from this campground that I really wanted to go to for 10 bucks. And now I'm in Boonville. It's already starting to rain and it looks like insane four inch rain like the other night. For the rest of the night, for the rest of the day. I don't want to go in a hotel room. But I'm gonna have to. It, it's so aggravating to try to find a camping spot and they're so far away in between. Like I, I, I went as fast as I could and I, I couldn't make it. So at least I have this, you know, so I have the option, but I, uh, I wanna camp and I can't unless I try to get in trouble, but I don't want to. Every morning I wake up and I'm so sore. I just gotta pedal lightly to get moving, <laughs> just to get the blood flowing. And then uh, it goes away and I get feeling good. 
I'm just like easing into it, leaving Boonville, heading for Higginsville or Odessa. Back on the Katy Trail. Not for the whole day, but for a good 20 miles, I think. And I kind of missed it yesterday, but I had a lot of fun yesterday too. So let's pick up the speed. I gotta do a lot of miles. Once again on the Katy Trail, I encounter several down trees after the last night's storm, but easily get past them and head towards a frontage road that parallels Interstate 70. I don't recall why I left the Katy Trail on this day and chose to get back on the pavement, but shortly after, that decision brought me troubles and more adventure. I'm going, I'm going! Alright, troubles. The guy running the excavator just told me that um, there's no way to get through. He was actually really cool. I think he would have gotten me through there. He says that the, the river is impassable and that there, there's no way. So I got to backtrack whatever miles I just did and get on the interstate. I might not leave the interstate and make up this three mile or two mile detour or backtrack that I have to do. Let's turn around go back that way. I gotta go through that to get on the interstate. That's the closest I can get. I'm doing it. like 20 miles an hour for a while average I'm gonna stay on the interstate for another 10 miles I think that'll make my day a lot easier and it's, some... it's kind of fun they're pushing me so fast like whenever I get some whenever I get
get him pushing me like that, it's just like a bad out of hell. <laughs> Alright, one more time, another 10 miles. Running for over 2,150 miles from Cove Fort, Utah to Baltimore, Maryland, Interstate I-70 traces the path of U.S. Route 40, also known as the Old National Road, the first major highway in the United States built by the federal government. It connects the cities of Denver, Topeka, Kansas City, St. Louis, Indianapolis, Columbus, and Baltimore. That was a blast. I did. I've done 40 miles in three hours. It's only 11 o'clock. I gotta take a little break. I was cranking. After exiting Interstate 70 for a break, I choose to ride a frontage road which parallels the freeway. Frontage roads are built in conjunction with a high-speed limited access road such as I-70 and used to create access to businesses, farms, houses and industrial buildings. These less congested and slower speed roads are not only safer for cycling but also more scenic. A downside is that they are not as flat as the freeway and demand more energy to get through. I need to take a right and now I'm like way north into fields, like farm fields and really terrible roads. <laughs> Trying to get back in line with the highway to get to Odessa. Should have never eaten that burrito for lunch. <laughs> they really slow me down. I think I'm close, yeah. I'm toast. Did 84 miles, which was my first, my best day yet, and um, got lost in a farm road scenario, like a detour from the highway. That was a six miles in my 70s that were like really difficult. But anyways, I'm camping out next to this in this private place. This couple just bought it, and the interstate is like right there. So I'm listening to the interstate. Just I gotta think for the interstate now. Like I. I'm gonna try not to use it, but I really, really think it's a phenomenal way to go. I mean, it's got a huge shoulder. It's got a lot of debris in there, like shreds from tires that are really dangerous and lots of dead animals. There are like perfect hills going up and going down. It's just like super smooth riding, just like it is for the people on their vehicles and trucks. For the bikers, like cyclists like me, like I'm, I think they're awesome and they're, pretty much safe I mean except for your tube you gotta be dodging stuff all the time which makes it fun anyways that's all I gotta say for today tomorrow Kansas City gonna meet up with Scott and see if he likes this stuff man it's my buddy he says he wants to give it a try I'm like wondering what he's gonna think of it but so be it it was his choice <laughs>